This is Frontline COVID Critical Care Alliance. Alliance. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, the FLCCC had their PayPal account suspended or canceled or whatever. So what we have here is a group of doctors who hold a heterodox position. Now, it's actually one held by thousands of doctors. Mm -hmm. But the problem is they have been unsuccessful. The big they that runs YouTube and associated properties has been unsuccessful at silencing the FLCCC. And the reason they have been unsuccessful is that these are highly credible doctors with a tremendous amount of on-the-ground experience, tremendous number of lives saved because they have innovated new standards of care for COVID, right? So people want to listen to what the, not everyone, but mm -hmm. many of us want to listen to what the FLCCC has to say. They and have so, relevant clinical experience and they are meeting success right. in their clinical experience. In their clinical <laughs> experience, demonstrable <laughs> success. And so the point is, oh, well, the attack that drives them into obscurity um, by using the terms of service of the various platforms has been unsuccessful. The propaganda campaign that has been used to blur the distinction between them and another group associated with Trump that has a similar sounding name. Mm -hmm. All of these right. things have been ineffective. And so what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to allow them to speak, but not be supported by people who want to hear what they have to say, right? We're so actually, did you say what the screen showed? Because it was it was very small and there are some people listening and not watching. It was especially small for them, uh, the ones who were just listening. But yeah, so the screen shows a tweet in which the FLCCC <laughs> reveals that PayPal has suspended their account. This is not the first time this has happened, right? For example, WikiLeaks has faced the hmm. same. Uh, this is the first time it's happened to the FLCCC. I believe that is correct. But the basic point is there's some force that wants to create an artificial consensus and it likes to use the lightest hand possible, right? If it can drive you into obscurity with the terms of service of the various platforms on which you might choose to talk to people, it will certainly do that. But if mm -hmm. it has to get in the way of your livelihood very directly by interfering with people's ability to use a credit card to support you or to use PayPal or any of these things, it will do it. And those those aren't the ultimate layers. There are layers even below that that we will see. I mean, we saw uh, various things pulled. Uh, the, um, uh, for example, Amazon Web Services that uh, didn't allow certain alternatives to Twitter uh, to exist um, on their service. There's lots of places to. When, when are we talking? During the election. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So things were. Uh, during, this, were, during the last presidential election. People were thrown off about. of Twitter. They showed up on another platform, and then that platform suddenly found it couldn't use Amazon Web Services as a host. And so the point is, there are lots of choke points, right? We sure. haven't seen them all yet. Some of them we've seen very occasionally, and some of them we see regularly, like this terms of service nonsense. Mm -hmm. Here's another one that I found absolutely jaw-dropping. Um, can you put up the paper, the Wayback Machine uh, that I sent you, Zach. Here we have a paper. Unfortunately, I'm going to be unable to read it on the screen that tiny, but this is a paper by Jessica Rose and Peter McCullough. These are both doctors. I can read the title from here. Um, yeah, go ahead. A report on myocarditis adverse events in the U.S. Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, VAERS, in association with COVID-19 injectable biological products. So this is a peer-reviewed paper that Jessica and Peter um, are had published, and Elsevier, the publisher, has now withdrawn this paper. It hasn't withdrawn it formally. What it's done is put up a notice in its place. Zach, could you put up the notice? Temporary removal, and just then... Yeah, a temporary removal, and then can you read the oh, line... Boy. The publisher regrets that the article has been temporarily removed. A replacement will appear as soon as possible. I really, that's tiny from here. I can't, I can't. Yeah, well, the <laughs> last like thing, the last thing it says is that when the paper is put back up, it will contain a notice about why it was removed uh, if it is not fully reinstated. So mm -hmm. this is very exotic. 
Here we have two yeah. highly what qualified. What journal was this? Oh, it was published in Current Problems in Cardiology. Current Problems in Cardiology. So just, just so people who aren't academics or, or doctors know, Elsevier is one of, if not the largest academic publisher. Oh, it's better it than is, that. Uh, okay, but that's but it's also true what I just said. It's absolutely true. <laughs> yes. uh, it is also, I believe, the oldest academic publisher. This is by its own account, right? You know who they what, claim? What is? Elsevier. Elsevier, what is by its own account? Elsevier, by its own account, is the oldest academic publishing house in existence, and they proudly proclaim themselves Galileo's publisher. Now, if one, um, How, wow, yes, if one <laughs> okay. delves deep enough, you find out that that's a little bit of a dubious claim that Elsevier is the name of something that did not have a continuous existence. But nonetheless, for a publisher that okay. wishes mm -hmm. to, you know, to wave Galileo, Flame the mantle at us, of publishing Galileo. Wow, right. Um, that is a remarkable failure. Mm -hmm. So I've never seen anything like that. Uh, that removal. I've never, and you know, I spend. I spend a fair bit of my time looking at academic papers on, on Elsevier's site and other places, and I've never seen anything like that. And it reveals the whole bankruptcy of this entire, uh, I don't even want to call it a discipline, it's many disciplines participating in the same failure. Mm -hmm. What exactly were, were Rose and McCullough supposed to do with their finding regarding myocarditis other than publish it where other cardiologists could scrutinize it and challenge it. They did exactly what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I've seen the paper. It's excellent. This is a very good paper. Does that make it right? No. But what mm -hmm. do you want to do to find out if it's right? You want to put it in front of peers out in public and let that discussion happen. And now it's gone. And it's not just, you know, if they hadn't gotten it published, it might exist on a preprint server. Right. Um, but presumably, since it was published, it's now simply not available at all, except via uh, way back machine. Right. And so all of this is to say that we have a consensus about the safety of the vaccines, about the ineffectiveness of early out of patent treatments. But that consensus is built out of intense coercion, mm -hmm. right? We've had people have their livelihoods interrupted. We have people's reputations threatened. We have people's peer reviewed papers removed from the web. The point is, if you're looking at that consensus and saying, can that many doctors be wrong? You have to ask yourself the question, well, which doctors am I not hearing from and why? How many doctors are afraid to say what they know? How many doctors are uh, being threatened with the loss of their jobs, reputations, careers, everything? This consensus is not a consensus, right? And the problem is that a lot of, frankly, high quality thinkers who don't happen to have experience in science aren't spotting this. And they're That's simply right. looking at the number of voices all saying the same thing and saying it's got to be right. 